Physiology SAQ 14. What are the important physiological events that take place following hypovolemic shock that leads to metabolic acidosis? 5 marks. Hypovolemic shock is a pathophysiological condition in which there is insufficient perfusion to sustain normal function of vital organs due to loss of circulating volume with a subsequent reduction in cardiac preload and cardiac output. It results from depletion of intravascular volume, whether by extracellular fluid loss or blood loss. Pathophysiology. Reduction in blood volume results in reduced preload, reduced cardiac output, reduced MAP, followed by reduced tissue perfusion and stagnant hypoxia. There is reduced oxidative phosphorylation, reduced Krebs cycle activity. Pyruvate is converted to lactate to regenerate NAD to produce ATP. Anaerobic glycolysis ensues. Exacerbating factors include increased cardiac work such as increased sympathetic outflow, resulting in increased heart rate, contractility, and myocardial VO2, and this increases lactic acid production. Increased work of breathing. Acidosis increases minute ventilation, which increases respiratory VO2 and lactic acid production. Reduced liver perfusion reduces the clearance of lactic acid. Compensatory responses. Decreased cardiac output and blood pressure is detected by high pressure barrel receptors in the carotid sinus and low pressure receptors in the right atrium and great veins. Compensatory processes occur to minimize change in effective blood volume and to maintain cardiac output and to maintain arterial blood pressure. Blood volume and cardiac output is maintained by venal constriction, by increased sympathetic tone and RAAS activation, transfer of fluid from interstitial fluid into plasma via changes in stalling forces across capillaries, decreased renal blood flow by increased sympathetic tone and RAAS activation, decreased urine production by reduced renal blood flow and ADH actions, mobilization of reservoir volumes from the liver and lungs by increased sympathetic tone and alpha-1 agonism, restlessness increases muscle pump activity in the legs which increases venous return, increased thirst stimulated by four brain receptors for blood osmolality, angiotensin and baroreceptors. Arterial blood pressure is maintained by peripheral vessel constriction by increased sympathetic tone and RAAS and increased heart rate and contractility by increased sympathetic tone. Failure of compensatory responses and subsequent events. As volume status continues to decrease, Compensatory mechanisms fail and tissue perfusion reduces to a point where oxygen delivery to vital organs is unable to meet oxygen demand. Cells switch from aerobic to anaerobic metabolism resulting in lactic acidosis. The failure to bring adequate amounts of oxygen to the tissues results in impact oxidative phosphorylation and decreased ATP synthesis. To survive, the cells rely on anaerobic glycolysis for generating ATP, producing lactic acid as the end product. Two molecules of ATP are generated for each molecule of glucose converted to two molecules of lactate. As sympathetic drive increases, blood flow is diverted from other organs to preserve blood flow to the heart and brain. Reduced blood flow to non-vital organs propagate tissue ischemia and worsens lactic acidosis. Hypoperfusion of tissues reduces their ability to convert lactate back to glucose, leading to accumulation of lactate and metabolic acidosis. Additional information. Organ effects of hypovolemic shock by system. For the cardiovascular system, reduced blood volume results in reduced preload, reduced cardiac output, and this leads to reduced MAP and diastolic BP. Coronary autoregulation fails below aortic root DBP of 60 mmHg. Acidosis inhibits L calcium channel and circa, which reduces inotropy. This predominates at pH of less than 7.2. There is risk of arrhythmia and arrest. Systemic vasodilation and pulmonary vasoconstriction occurs due to acidosis. Increased sympathetic outflow results in increased heart rate, inotropy, and myocardial VO2. Systemic and pulmonary vasoconstriction occurs. Autotransfusion from capacitance vessels from the skin, gut, liver, spleen, and lung occurs. There is increased myocardial oxygen demand and reduced oxygen supply, increasing the risk of type 2.
myocardial ischemia. For the respiratory system, reduced blood volume increases west zone 1 of the lung. This increases state space and reduces ETCO2. Reduced pH increases peripheral chemoreceptor activity and this increases minute ventilation which doubles for each reduction in pH by 0.1. There is right shift of OHDC due to acidosis and increased 2,3 dpg. Acidosis is partially offset by left shift due to respiratory alkalosis. For the CNS, reduced blood volume results in CNS ischemia, primary and secondary hypoxic ischemic brain injury. There is failure of autoregulation at CPP of less than 50 mmHg. Presentation may include confusion, coma, apnea, and death. There is increased sympathetic output from the medulla due to central ischemic response. For the kidneys, reduced blood volume results in reduced perfusion pressure. Autoregulation fails when MAP falls below 70 mmHg. Hence, reduced MAP results in reduced GFR and oliguria. If hypotension is prolonged, there is ATN and renal failure. Acidosis increases bicarbonate reabsorption, especially at the distal nephron, increased phosphoric acid excretion, and increased NH4 production, which results in increased bicarbonate reabsorption. In the liver, reduced blood volume results in reduced MAP and hepatic ischemia. Lactic acid is converted to glucose via the Cori cycle. Metabolic changes include hyperkalemia due to hydrogen and potassium ion exchange across cells. Hypercalcemia occurs due to hydrogen and calcium ion exchange with bone. Progressive stage of shock. Should the cause of the crisis not be successfully treated, the shock will proceed to the progressive stage in which compensatory mechanisms fail. As anaerobic metabolism continues, increasing the body's metabolic acidosis, arteriolar smooth muscles and precapillary sphincters relax. Blood remains in the capillaries leading to leakage of fluid and protein into surrounding tissues. As fluid is lost, blood concentration and viscosity increases, causing blockage of the microcirculation. The prolonged vessel constriction also cause vital organs to be compromised due to reduced perfusion. If bowels are sufficiently ischemic, bacteria may translocate into the bloodstream, resulting in additional complication of endotoxic shock. At the refractory stage of shock, the vital organs have failed and shock can no longer be reversed. Brain damage and cell death occurs. Death is imminent. Shock is irreversible. Large amount of cellular ATP has been degraded into adenosine in the absence of oxygen as an electron receptor in the mitochondrial matrix. Adenosine easily perfuses out of cellular membranes into extracellular fluid, furthering capillary vasodilation and is transformed into uric acid. Because cells can only produce adenosine at a rate of about 2% of the cell's total need per hour, even restoring oxygen is futile at this point because there are no adenosine to phosphorylate into ATP. B. What are the compensatory mechanisms for metabolic acidosis following hypovolemic shock? 5 marks. The compensatory stage of shock is characterized by employment of neuro, hormonal, and biochemical mechanisms in the body's attempt to reverse lactic acidosis. Neuro and hormonal compensation for hypovolemic shock has been discussed in Part A. Compensatory mechanisms for metabolic acidosis includes dilution, buffering, respiratory compensation, renal compensation, ion exchange, and correction of the underlying cause. Dilution is immediate. Distribution of acid across body fluid compartments minimizes fall in local or plasma pH. Buffering, which occurs in minutes. A buffer resists change in pH when acid or base is added or removed. It consists of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base with its conjugate acid. Hydrogen ion is readily exchanged. Ideal properties of buffer include abundant, rapid action, pKa equals ambient pH plus minus 1 and being an open system. Intracellular buffering consists of actions of proteins and phosphate. The imidazole groups of histidine residues of proteins 
are the main sites of buffering. Intracellular proteins are abundant and have a pKa that approximates pH of intracellular fluid of 6.8. Phosphate buffer. H2PO4 minus reversibly dissociates to H plus and HPO42 minus. There are high concentration of phosphate in the cell of 30 to 60 millimole per liter. Its pKa is also 6.8. Extracellular buffering consists of bicarbonate, hemoglobin, and plasma proteins. Bicarbonate is the most important ECF buffer. CO2 plus H2O reversibly forms H2CO3, which reversibly dissociates to H plus and bicarbonate ion. Increased H plus produces a left shift in this equilibrium, which increases CO2 formation, which is exhaled. pKa is 6.1, which is distant to plasma pH of 7.4. However, it has a high concentration of 24 millimole per liter. Rapid action of carbonic anhydrase hastens carbonic acid formation, and it's open-ended as CO2 can be exhaled and hydrogen ions can be urinated. Hemoglobin is the second most important ECF buffer. Compared with plasma proteins, it has two times higher concentration of 14 grams per deciliter and three times more imidazole groups per molecule of 38 compared to 13 in plasma proteins. Imidazole groups on histidine residues are the main site of action for buffering. pKa of imidazole groups are 6.8. Carbamino compound formation, CO2 plus HbNH2 reversibly forms HbNHCOO- plus hydrogen ion. CO2 binds to terminal amino groups and amino groups on side chains of lysine and arginine. Released hydrogen ions are buffered by imidazole groups as described above. Plasma proteins. Imidazole groups of histidine residues are the main site of action of buffering. pKa is 6.8, which is moderately close to plasma pH of 7.4. Respiratory compensation occurs within minutes. Mechanism is via stimulation of peripheral chemoreceptors by hydrogen ions. This results in increased minute ventilation and increased CO2 exhalation, which results in reduced hydrogen ions. Expected PaCO2 can be estimated by Winter's formula, which equals 8 plus 1.5 times bicarbonate ion plus minus 2. ECF pH approaches but does not reach or exceed 7.4. Respiratory compensation is ineffective for fixed acid because both Hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ions are being removed as CO2, which is a volatile acid. Renal compensation occurs within hours to days. Three processes are involved, which includes bicarbonate ion reabsorption, increased excretion of titratable acid, and increased NH3 production and bicarbonate ion reabsorption. Increased bicarbonate Ion reabsorption is due to increased activity of sodium hydrogen ion antiporter in the proximal convoluted tubule and increased activity of hydrogen ion ATPase in the distal tubule. Excretion of titratable acid includes phosphoric and sulfuric acid. There is buffering of secreted hydrogen ion by these filtered buffers. Usual production is 30 mmol per day, max 60 mmol per day, indicating low capacity. Increased NH3 production occurs when titratable acid is exhausted. Glutamine is converted to two NH4 ions and bicarbonate ion. NH4 is excreted. 100% of bicarbonate ion is reabsorbed. 50% of NH4 ions are reabsorbed and recycled. Production of ammonium ions can be up to 300 mmol per day, i.e. this system is high capacity. Ion exchange. Hydrogen and potassium ion exchange occurs in cells. Hydrogen and calcium ion exchange occurs in bones.